Well, peace be with you. Right on cue. That was perfect. How about rise as you're able and turn to your neighbor this morning and to greet them with the peace of Christ. Gracious God, we ask now that you would open our hearts, open our minds, and open our spirits. Have us, O oh God, in a place that we would receive what you have for us today. May this time be filled with your blessings. In your many names we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, there are all kinds of peace, aren't there? All different kinds of peace. You know, back in the, when I grew up in the 60s and 70s, peace was referred to often with the peace sign. But most often, the kind of peace they were talking about was about a chemically enhanced state of euphoria. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but there's also peace on earth and goodwill to all, right? You hear that mostly around the holidays. Then there's the confusing English language where we have a whole different kind of peace, like piece of cake or um, piece of my mind. Woo! And then there was peace and quiet. My mother was fond of saying that. She said, can I get a little peace and quiet around here? And I tell you what, you knew what that really meant. It wasn't about peace and quiet. It was shut up and sit down and get out of <laughs> It was code words. It's code word. But today we're talking about the peace of Christ. The peace that it says in John, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and be not afraid. So here was Jesus, the Prince of Peace, promising the Holy Spirit and comforting his disciples with the message of peace. And in Philippians, we hear the words about the peace that surpasses all understanding. So I have a question for you this morning. If we have all of this peace and Jesus has left his peace with us and we have the peace that surpasses all understanding, why don't we have more peace? Huh? Why is that? Why aren't we all walking around in a zen-like state? Mm -hmm. Huh? That's peace is elusive, isn't it? Even more elusive today, I think, than it was yesterday. Yeah? There's another one, I've seen those bumper stickers, and it says, no Jesus, no peace. No Jesus, no peace. You get that one? Well, so why is it we don't have peace? What are some of the ways that we can have more peace in our lives and experience that peace that Jesus calls and offers to all of us? You know what? The number one of the first things that you can do if you want to have more peace is breathe. Simply breathe. Breathe in the breath of God. Breathe out the anxiety. Breathe out the negativity. Let's all do it. Breathe in that breath of God. And breathe out that anxiety, that, that negativity. It's amazing what a difference that makes. And you know there's something that happens when you breathe and you're intentional about breathing because for at least that second, you're in the moment. 
You're in the moment, and that's where we truly experience the divine, too, is in that moment. So breathe, breathe. How can breathing become part of our spiritual practices? That when we intentionally sit down to study God's word or to pray, that we start off by breathing so we can be there in the present moment. It's such an important part, such an easy thing to do, but can make such an incredible difference. I know that if I'm, I'm getting all anxious about something, if I think, if I remember to breathe, what a difference it can make. Just that simple act. So the other question is, how do you start your day? Do you start your day with a cup of coffee and turning on the news? If you start your day maybe with a cup of tea and then you go right to social media and check Facebook? Huh? How you start your day is going to make a difference in how much peace you have that day. What if instead of starting our day with the news, which listen, the only thing that they have on the news is to raise your anxiety. Really, it's no story if there's no conflict in it. And so, you know, it's, it's all about, I'm not saying we don't need to be aware of what's going on in the world, but I'm not sure that's the way you need to start your day. And the same thing on Facebook, you know, they're trying to get your attention. They want you to like something or not like it. So all of those things just do what? Raise your anxiety and take away your peace. What a simple thing instead just to sit down for a few moments and read through the Psalms. Amen. Just spend some time reading through the Psalms. The Psalms have all of these wonderful descriptors of God and how beautiful and how amazing God is and the stories of God's mercy and God's love. And in the flip side of the Psalms is in stories about their enemies and how they're being attacked and how that they then respond to God's love, even in the midst of all of the confusion and all of the hate and all of the difference and all of the, the negativity of that's going on in the world. So and it's, it's a very different way to start your day. Now, I'm going to be honest here. I'm going to be, I'm going to tell the truth here. I was one that went right to social media when I got up, you know, and I realized that it was all of a sudden I was already starting my day anxious. And so as I've been shifted in reading the Psalms, then I can go, then, then I can go to social media and get anxious. <laughs> 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 but you know what? It's, I think if you start the day by putting God first, Amen. Huh? Amen. what a difference it can make. What a difference it could make. And then, you know, we always have places of conflict in our lives. It's all around us. And what is conflict? Having two different ideas at the same time. Really. We can all handle conflict probably a little bit better. Now, what would it be like if we were to walk in in the middle of what it would be a heated discussion about where we're going to go for brunch after church? <laughs> this is a real story here. <laughs> <laughs> and what if you were to be the one that takes a deep breath and says, hey, 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 we got this. We can figure it out. You know? There's something about being the least anxious presence in the room that changes the tone of the conflict. You don't have to be without anxiety, but you can be the least anxious presence in the room. And if you do so, it will make a difference in that group and to everyone in that group and in that, into that conversation. You know, I've said before that anxiety is contagious. Anxiety is. And so the more anxious you get when you're having these kind of group discussions, the more, the higher the level of anxiety is going to go up. And it's true. You ever watch, in, 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 there's a field out there that's full of cows. One cow gets scared, gets anxious, and starts running, and all the other cows start running too. And they don't even know what they're running for. Right? 
But we follow the same suit in terms of our anxiety. But with calmness, I believe, is also contagious. So if we're the one that is projecting that peace, we have the opportunity then to influence the rest of the group too, right? So what are we going to be? We're going to be the least anxious presence. Now, I have another big question for you. Can there be real peace while there is still injustice in the world? Can there be real peace while there is still injustice in the world? It's a tough one. Because in, in the scripture it says, blessed are the peacemakers. And the truth is, there are no peacemakers without scars. Huh? Think of the peacemakers of Nelson Mandela, of Gandhi, of Jesus. And I'll tell you what I've learned, that sometimes I can't have peace unless I act. Unless I act on some type of injustice, I can't have any peace. Peace often means doing the right thing. Let me give you an example. Many years ago, when I was still with my partner, we were celebrating an anniversary, and we went up to Julian, California, which is about, oh, an hour, hour and a half from San Diego. And it's a beautiful little mountain town, very quaint, you know, good place where gay people would go. <laughs> and so we went up to this bed and breakfast for our anniversary. In the morning, you get up at the bed and breakfast, they have these communal breakfasts, right? where everybody, whether you don't know people or not, you know, you sit down and you have breakfast with them and you get to know them. Well, on this particular day, the headlines of the San Diego Union Tribune said, Board of Regents votes to uh, give same-sex rights and same-sex benefits to all of the people in the university system of California. Well, I thought, wow, this is great. So this other guy comes in with his wife, picks it up and goes, boy, the Board of Regents really blew it. <laughs> My partner is looking at me. You know that look? Don't go there. <laughs> don't, don't do it. Don't do it. It's our anniversary. Please, please. And I'm just frothing in the bit to have a discussion with him about how the Board of Regents did not blow it. What a tough decision. I'm going to lose some peace over here. I'm going to have, not have much peace on the ride home. <laughs> and then over here, I'm not going to have much peace if I let this go without addressing it. Right? That's like sometimes, you know, you have to act in order to have any peace. I'm going to be honest again. I opted for the peace on the ride home. <laughs> but I will say this, it's drove me crazy ever since. You know, ever since that I didn't take the time to say something that, that addressed that issue. You know, I don't want to be seen as giving tacit approval to injustice. And in that moment, that's what I did. But we, I think that you have to prayerfully consider those times where God is truly calling you to act and to stand up for justice, to stand up for what's right. We need you to be, and this world needs more of that. Amen? Amen. You know, one last thing I want to say about peace is that we need to remember, and this is the peace that surpasses all understanding, is that love always wins. Amen. Love, and we get caught up in the moment of what's going on and what's happening, and we forget that love truly does always win. You know, I think what a wonderful, beautiful way that we saw this was last week 
when they have the memorial service for the Pulse at Pulse. I right there on site in Joy Metropolitan Community Church was there. The rainbow appeared in the sky. See that picture? Love always wins. Let that be the source of your peace today and always. Amen.